In our gospel story today, we see Martha and Mary, and they're being true to themselves. Martha, as you recall, is the one who just loved more action, the workaholic. Mary was the one whose instinct was just to kind of just, just sit still, be the more contemplative, just wait to see how things kind of play out. But as soon as it was announced that Jesus was coming to their town after the death of their brother Lazarus, Martha got up quickly to go and meet him. She simply could not sit still. When Martha met Jesus, her emotions speak through her words. And so what we see, what we just heard in our gospel, is one of the most human responses in all of the Bible. Martha spoke to Jesus with a little bit of anger she couldn't hold back, but also with faith which she also could not hide. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. In those words, we see a pretty good picture of what Martha was thinking. Jesus, if you received the message that Lazarus was sick, how come you didn't come right away? Why did you take so long? Now you come, but now it's too late. But because Martha deeply respected our Lord, as soon as she said those words, she spoke words of faith. But even now I know that whatever you ask God, he will give you. And of course, Jesus responds, your brother will rise again. Now we know what he meant by that, but she didn't. This is not exactly what Martha wanted him to say. She expected Jesus to do something. And so also in faith, but in a little bit of anger, she says, I know quite well that he will rise, but on the resurrection, the last day. You see, why was she upset about all this? What Martha was frustrated with is this. Jesus was, yes, he was delayed in coming. He took his time, but he did that on purpose. The glory of God might be shown through this great miracle. But also, secondly, try to remember that back in those days, for the people of the Old Testament, they really did not have a good, strong belief in any kind of life after death. Many of them, the Sadducees especially, didn't even believe in resurrection. For those who did, they believed that the good, when they died, went to some place, kind of like a shadow land, where maybe you weren't tormented, but there wasn't any joy there. So Martha, she didn't have any comfort in this. But Jesus then says what's easily the most powerful words ever spoken in all of the Bible. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. What exactly does our Lord Jesus mean by this, though? Because one thing's very clear if you think about it. Jesus was not talking about physical life because, strictly speaking, on a physical level, our bodies are going to die. Every single one of you here in this church tonight, there's going to be a funeral mass one of these days for you. Okay? We, we can't get around that. Okay? So the thing is, the Christian experiences death as well as anybody else. So if Jesus says, where believes in me will never die, well, it can't mean that. So there has to be then a deeper meaning here. So what Lord Jesus is getting at and saying that if we believe in him, we will not die. He's talking about the death that comes because of sin. As many theologians have pointed out over the years, what Jesus is saying is, even if a man is dead in his sin, he has ruined his life. Even if through his sins, all that he just loves in life is his lost, I can make him alive once again. Here is a real life example of how this works. Back when the 19th century was turning into the 20th century, in Japan, there was a man named Tokichi Ishii, who was a notorious criminal and a murderer. He would kill anybody who got in his way. Men, women, even kill children, oftentimes in a very horrible manner. They caught him, and while in a Tokyo prison awaiting his death, he was visited by two Canadian women who were missionaries. And they tried to talk to him, but he treated them so poorly, as if he was a caged animal, just growling at them, they were unable to speak with him. But as they were leaving, they gave him the Bible, and he read it. He will later on say in a book written about his life, he came to the story about the crucifixion. And our Lord Jesus there on the cross and those powerful words of our Lord when he said, Father, 
Forgive them, for they, they know not what they do. Those words broke through this man's very hard heart. And he would say, I was stabbed to the heart as if I was pierced by a five-inch nail. Shall I call it the love of Christ? Shall I call it his compassion? I don't know what to call it. I only know that I believed. And my hardness of heart was changed. And later on, when he went to the scaffold to be hung for his crimes back in 1918, he was no longer a man full of hatred and evil. He was smiling, even radiant, on the day of his death. He literally had been given a new life in Christ. Jesus brought this man back to life even as he was facing death. Now, the scripture scholar William Barclay, he knew about this story. He said, it doesn't have to be so dramatic as that. A man can become so selfish that he is dead to the needs of others. Another man can become so insensitive he is dead to the feelings of others. A man can become so involved in petty dishonesty, disloyalties of life, he is dead to all things that are honorable. And another man can become so hopeless, he's spiritually dead. But Jesus Christ can resurrect all of these men. You see, when Jesus told Martha, and then all of us, those powerful words, telling us at the resurrection, that's not just some kind of concept, it's not an idea, it's him. He shows us that he's focused on the life to come. That physical death, well, that's not the final word. You see, St. Edward, the confessor, on the day that he was martyred, that he was killed for his faith, his last words were these. Weep not, I shall not die. And as I leave the land of the dying, I trust to see the blessings of the Lord in the land of the living. He absolutely got it right. You see, so many people of today call this world of ours the land of the living. But in fact, that's not true. This world is actually the land of the dying. Through a life lived in our Lord Jesus Christ, we are on a journey not toward a sunset, but to a sunrise. You see, for faithful Christians in a very real way, we're not on our way to death. We're on our way to life. And how does this happen? It happens when we believe. Now, you've heard that probably a zillion times, man. You just got to believe, man. What, what, what is this all about? What does that mean? To believe in Jesus means to accept everything that he said as absolutely true. And to live our lives in perfect trust in him. But what's the problem? Some of you are doing a great job with that, a great job with that. But some of you right here in front of me, you still don't trust him, do you? You don't trust God. Well, you, you, is that it for you? You're done? Check you off the list? No. He came especially for you to give you back some more faith, some more hope, and of course, his love. So you can believe in him and what he says. You see, if we can do that, believe in the word of God and in his person, we can enter to two new relationships. The first new one is with God. You see, when we believe that God the Father is exactly as Jesus tells us that he is, we become absolutely sure of his love. We become absolutely sure that he doesn't want to destroy us. He wants to save us. Thus, the fear of death disappears. Because death, physical death, simply means just going back home. Just going back to the love beyond all imagining. But secondly, we also enter into a new relationship with life. When we accept Jesus' teachings, take his grace, accept his love, take his commandments to heart, and when we realize he's always so close by, so close to us to help us with everything we need to live in his light, well then life itself becomes brand new. And through Jesus, life becomes fresh, lovely, so lovely 
we can continue to see God's hand and blessing even in the middle of trial and suffering. So, when we believe in Jesus, when we accept what he says about God and about life, and then put everything we have into it, we begin to be resurrected. You don't gotta wait till you die. You can be resurrected tonight. Through Jesus, we can now be free from the fear that comes when we're not living our lives right, man. We can also be free from the frustrations of living in a sinful world. We can also be free now from the futility of trying to live without Christ. Because Jesus really is the resurrection and the life, our life in him is now raised from the darkness of sin and it becomes so rich it cannot die. It cannot die. And when that day, that day finally comes when our physical bodies are deceased, that death will only be a transition to a much blessed and greater life.